I know that a lot of you guys watching really like alternate history and fantasy mods for EU4. Just taking a look at mods like Antebellum and Anbanar, it's pretty clear. And I also really enjoy these sorts of mods, so I decided to make my own. It's called Post Phenom, and it's currently live on the workshop right now. Link's going to be in the description, and it explores a timeline in which Carthage came out victorious in the Three Punic Wars against Rome. I don't want to spoil too much lore, so if you want to read up on it, I'll have the Discord linked in the description as well, where you can find the lore dump and ask questions for the devs, as well as find some other cool peeps who like EU4 alt history. This mod has been almost seven months in the making, and a lot of time and effort has gone into making it as fun and pretty as possible, so I really do hope that you guys enjoy. There is a crazy amount of content within the scope area of the mod, so we should definitely be seeing quite a bit. Obviously, we're going to be focusing primarily on this area, but if I see, you know, anything wacky going on in the rest of the world, I'll make sure to chime in on it. Major things we're going to be looking for early on is a bit of a civil war in Egyptos, and then uh, we're going to have to take a look at a couple of government mechanics that have been added. Specifically, Macedonia's is going to be really important on whether they sink or swim. Uh, Carthage's is more pretty cool than anything else, and I, we're definitely going to be taking a look at the Italian Federation over here, which is going to be obviously a central portion of the game, just like the HRE is in vanilla. Up in the Celtic Isles here, the island of the nation of Celtica, has a couple of tributary states over here, and it looks like they have recently lost a little bit of land as long as, or as well as Brigantes here to Nordinvik, who is allied to Norway because we've got some, uh, some Norse invaders kind of think of this like the Dane law, I guess you could say, kind of, sort of, because of course the, the religious map mode is, is completely overhauled. Um, I'm not sure exactly how in-depth I would have went in the intro, probably not super in-depth, but uh, yeah, we can definitely expect a bit of a different look from vanilla, of course, because, you know, there's Christians, there's just, you know, not really. Some other notable starts here is Saxony with a couple of subjects. They've got three subjects here, uh, which they definitely are going to need to leverage their strength if they want to push back against Kashubia. They start with some cores and claims on them. Kashubia is, is um, they're a big scary boy. They're kind of like uh, Muscovy in this game if I had to pick, you know, an analog to vanilla. Gaul has a unique reform, the Gallic hierarchy, which allows them to um, elect a leader. So they have the elective monarchy in this time with um, Corentus or whatever that family is in charge. The Subi peoples over here in Iberia have their diadem control, which is basically their kind of early absolutism, if you will. Carthage has a pretty cool one that I actually made myself, and uh, it's basically a Republican versus monarchist. Now, the tooltip is busted, but that's just because of my UI mod. But uh, you can see they get some bonuses for the uh, Republicans in charge, which would be the Adarum. And then the Sufet is the king kind of deal, which will give them some bonuses to military slash conquest stuff. So, so, you know, a little bit of flavor for both sides if you decide to go one way or the other. But the big one here is Macedonia. Like I said, their war cabinet organization is going to be very important for kind of the future of their nation. Because you can see here, they start with some pretty serious malices. Uh, the recruitment cost and all that stuff alone causes them some issues. But uh, that military tactics malice, they're only going to get rid of that if they get up to at least 50. And you can see right now they're not gaining any, but the AI is pretty good at it. I spent quite a bit of time making sure that the AI wasn't a complete dumb dumb and could at least manage a little bit of this. There's also some estate privileges that can help with uh, with this, like this one right here gives them a little bit of monthly organization. So they should be fine. And of course, we have to look at Persia because Persia's is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting ones. We have centralization here, starts at 50, and uh, it actually scales one to one with subject liberty desire. They start off with some pretty disloyal subjects, and uh, they actually have a revolt that happens, is guaranteed to happen in the first year of the game. So they're going to have some issues here, and they'll be able to work through their mission tree, which is an absolute gorgeous mission tree uh, made by Lily over on the team. And uh, this is going to be definitely something to watch. Uh, it's essentially a mini game within the nation. You can see here that they could spend their centralization to seize privileges, but it allows them to basically kind of clamp down on their subjects or they can grant concessions, which will cost them centralization um, and it will move farther here. Um, but they want to make it up to 100 because then they get to uh, kind of swap out this Zoroastrian theocracy with a new one. That's even better. Persia also has some really interesting stuff over here, namely the Satrapy expansion plan, which is basically forcing them to conquer land for their subjects. And if they conquer land outside of what their subjects have claimed, they actually get new subjects like Babylonia, Assyria, Caspia, uh, even a couple over here in India. So we're going to be keeping an eye on that, assuming that they're able to, you know, go through the Satrap revolt here in the beginning. 
And last thing I'll mention before I actually unpause here is Carthage is kind of like the Timurids. They've got three subjects, very disloyal, and uh, they have cores on all of them. So if they can keep them loyal long enough, they'll be able to integrate them. However, in 1444, Carthage is on the brink of disaster, giving them some pretty serious penalties here to their subjects' liberty. And they also start at negative two stability with a malice to gaining it. So uh, Carthage is kind of a coin toss for the AI, whether it can make it through or not. And I kind of like that. Either way, you guys have been very patient. I know that I've explained a lot of stuff, but I promise you there's a ton of stuff to explore in this mod. You're going to have to check it out for yourself. It's been released. It's on the Steam Workshop. It's linked in the description below. Make sure you check it out. But for today, let's go ahead, turn on and up speed five and unpause. I got a shill for a second here, this beautiful UI that was made by Doge and uh, Plati, a couple of really talented UI modders in the EU4 community. I tweaked a couple of things, so it's kind of my own thing, but it's also theirs as well. So the art is from them, but I uh, moved some stuff around and made some stuff bigger and smaller. I made this here, this religious tensions mechanic, because we have uh, the Romana and the Punix over here within the Federation. Romana are kind of like a Latinized peoples that have been persecuted over the years and over the centuries by the Punix who have settled and you know established themselves in here since the fall of Rome. Religious tension goes up and down via events based on people within the Federation, mostly the Adarum, which is the, the Emperor and the Electors down here. Um, and it does give some changes to modifiers based on that. And it's definitely going to really heavily affect authority growth. So going to have to keep an eye on that as well. The revolt over in Persia not going so well. They have to get all of their subjects below 50 Liberty Desire in order to keep them. And, uh, and I think 1450, if any of them are at 100%, they become independent. So it looks like Corsant may become independent, maybe Tiberistan. The AI is usually pretty good about handling it. I'd say it's about 50-50 whether they keep all of them or not. So, you know, time will tell. Meanwhile, Carthage over here making some moves, probably going to annex yeah, Yathrib, I think, as well as over here in Fizan. It's a power move that they normally do early on, and they're going to need it because they need as much land force limit as they can to keep these subjects loyal. Three years in, and uh, Arab pagans have actually annexed the Christians, so uh, rip those guys. In Saxony making some moves, annexing two guys over here in Northern Germania. Not really sure what Subi's doing over here. Attacked three miners that are all allied to each other, and um, they are outnumbered right now, so not a good look. We definitely want our colonizer to at least be able to colonize, so we'll see how things go with that. It's also worth noting that we've overhauled the Zoroastrian religion. They actually use Anglican aspects now, and uh, you know, I went through and made some pretty art for all of these. So, you know, sometimes the UI is goofy and that's just my UI mod. So don't don't worry about that. I promise the, the mod is polished. It's very polished compared to what it might look like with UI mods because, you know, UI modding in E4 is fun. It appears that Subi didn't hear no bell and actually annexed one of them, half annexed another one and then pieced out this Curventa on their own. So uh, Subi making moves. Bit of a lore dump for you guys over here in Egyptos. Isidora Gidos is a, a usurper regent. So she starts the game here, the leader of Egyptos, but uh, isn't really like. And uh, her son, Theodoro, is widely considered the uh, the true heir to Egyptos, the true pharaoh or whatever, because his father was expected to be killed by Isidora. It's not, it's not allegedly, allegedly, it's not, it's not 100%. But either way, there is some rebels that they've been fighting. They would have been fighting them at least. And it uh, looks like they're handling them okay. They don't have a whole lot of men in the field and they don't have a whole lot of manpower to spare. But uh, if they can pull through there, then uh, Isidora will be overthrown and Theodora will be installed. And uh, definitely a bit of a rocky start for Egyptos. But if you can make it through the Civil War early on, they are incredibly, incredibly powerful. And their mission tree is um, its pretty juicy. It's pretty juicy. Oh, it looks like a new Stormbringer here of Nordinvik, the uh, the Conqueror Jarl or whatever, has died. And they actually fell under a personal union of Norway. It is partially scripted, at least. So uh, Norway has a pretty strong subject, 12,000 men over here in Pickland. So mm, they might be able to do something with that, considering the fact that they're stronger than they are. They're loyal, at least, because they're, you know, historical friends. So that's pretty good. I actually missed the first one. The Pirates of Isle happened. So the, the nation of Isle over here begins as a pirate republic. And it seems like they had petitioned the Adarim to join the Federation. They were allowed entry on the premise that they give up their piracy ways and become a plutocracy. So there you go. We have another one going on here. Uh, Lombardia is seeking protection. So we have the Romana nation of Lombardy up here uh, has seemingly seeking protection from Gaul. Uh, and they are asking to join the Federation as kind of a defensive alliance. Um, it looks like they're going to be allowed entry. So this is uh, this is good. Oh, and Roma also has a principate over here of Isle. It looks like they have attacked Naples 
for conquest. So that's a uh, rip them, I guess. Uh, looks like they're actually helping defend against something here. I don't really know what's that about. And they also got a PU over Carthalis here. They're uh, kind of the Burgundian inheritance of this mod. So Roma probably has a very, very strong power base. And I'd be very surprised if they ended up losing the Emperor ship. Actually, they are going to lose it right now. So um, OK, we'll see how things go with that. Some goings on in the Italian Federation. We have the first Reformation has passed, so we got an extra diplomat for the Adram, so that's pretty good. Some local dev costs for all federal provinces, which is pretty good, and uh, Imperial Ban. So maybe we're going to see the uh, Federation go for a couple of these provinces that uh, they don't own control at the same time. Uh, at the same time, religious tensions have gone over 25, so we're actually starting to see a little bit of a malice here. They're fair Romana relations. So uh, they will progressively get worse and worse as time goes on, and once they reach 100, I've got a surprise for you. By golly, the Mad Lads did it. They've pushed through and they have finished the Satrapy Revolt. So they've got some claims. I imagine they're going to be pushing them pretty soon here. And meanwhile, we've got uh, more invasions going on with Norwegian Celtica and then Nordinvik over here on the island of Celtica. So um, yeah, it looks like the Norse are doing pretty good so far. Also, one of the tribes over here have been eaten up by Brigante. So the Britons are taking over the, uh, the lower part of uh, Albion, I think is what we've called the Isle in this mod. We do have our first uh, non 1444 satrapy here in Babylonia, established over in Basra. So that's pretty cool. Oh, I stand, I stand corrected here. It looks like uh, the sheep shaggers of Wales have actually just dominated Brigantes here. So um, the Welsh are coming, not the Britons. The Britons are, uh, you know, the king of the who. Oh, meanwhile, over in uh, Macedonia here, we have an ostracized ruler here, Callius who is uh, Callius the Coward. He's not a very good ruler, according to the lore. If we take a look over here, you can see the uh, Sacred Athenaeum here. We've got uh, the papacy around the Archon, who is Athens. So uh, that's pretty cool. You can see Reform Fervor is ticking up because um, we've got a Reformation that will happen eventually here. And uh, Archonism is the current dominant philosophy with lots of nations investing people, or not people, but uh, uh, Athenaean influence. So uh, yeah, I made this art myself. I'm really proud of it. So let me know what you think about it. Uh oh, looks like it didn't work out for Carthage. We've got a Numidian war for independence, including all of their subjects, uh, former subjects, and Gaul joining in. Um, eh, it's anybody's game, honestly. It looks like Carthage will probably lose. I don't imagine Gaul will get a whole lot of soldiers down here, but um, it doesn't look like Carthage has that many either. So probably a rip for Carthage. Which is a bummer for them because uh, Carthage is a pretty good end node here. You can see we reworked the entire trade node system. Most of them are mostly the same in terms of shape. Uh, we've switched around some stuff over here, but now the only end nodes are actually over in Italia and then Carthage. I did have the Aegean as an end node, but it made Macedonia way too strong. So we ended up nerfing it for the purpose of, you know, keeping it realistic. Meanwhile, over here, we've got Kashubia and their subject of Lechia attacking the Saxons right now. Looks like they've uh, already gotten uh, Ruyana over here, which has a, you know, a special great project just for them. So it looks like Shubi is doing pretty good. I imagine that they're going to win. I imagine that they're being offensive here. Uh, numbers are not looking that great with that Vassal Swarm, but we'll see how things go with them. I feel like it's usually a coin toss between who wins, Saxony and Kashubia, because they're kind of like rivals in the mod. So we'll see how things go. Also, Finnish Baltic is a thing. Uh, I love that. I very much love that. So as far as Africans go, Carthage, not looking good. Um, it looks like they may end up coming out on top in this war, but we'll see how things go with their subjects. Uh, meanwhile, somebody who is doing well over here is Theodoro over in Egyptos, just full annexed Syria, who's integrated a bunch of their subjects and is pushing down into Kush. So uh, Egyptos having a good game so far, which is definitely gonna be nice. Meanwhile, Persia has a Magan over here, another, or Magan, or however it's pronounced, uh, Maga N <laughs> is a new subject over here in uh, Ost, uh, whatever this is, uh, Oman. And it looks like they're probably going to be taking this land from Hassa as well, which I believe goes to Magan. So looking pretty good. Okay, the Mad Lads did it. Carthage has won their war, taken some land from their subjects, and all three of them are very disloyal, like under 20% liberty desire. They're going to have to wait 10 years to annex them, but it looks like Carthage has come out on top. Slow, but, uh, you know, slow and steady wins the race and all that. Meanwhile, Subi over here, uniting Iberia and pushing Aravia out. So uh, going to be very strong over here. Meanwhile, Macedonia 
has some subjects. Egyptos continuing to thrive. And Persia got uh, Mare Nostrum over here on the Persian Gulf. So good on them. They also have Rajasthan. So uh, got lots of satraps coming into the fold over here. And in the meantime, the Federation is still chugging along, looking to push that Elevate Princeps reform through, which will help him maintain his dominance with that uh, Diplo rep. Uh, meanwhile, religious, religious tensions here is up over 50, and we're finally seeing some issues with uh, federal authority growth, as well as some opinions. So a eh, little, little, little tension going, a little bit of tension. And it looks like I spoke too soon. Nova Moria here, the southern, like the heel of Italia has become the new Grand Adoram, and uh, Roma has been left in the dust, losing their uh, their empire status. Um, I don't think it's going to stay. They're they're very strong. They're the most powerful nation in the empire or the uh, federation. So they'll probably take it back. But having a weak Adoram is definitely not a good look for the for everybody going on. And I missed it. We also had another um, incident that has happened. Corfu and the Federation. The Adoram has demanded the direct return of Corfu, and it looks like the boys, the Jew boys over in Necarot, have given up Corfu. And we now have uh, Leonidas Scribus, the Duke, leading a part of the HRE, I guess. Gotta change that localization, but here you go. Pretty cool. And bam, just like that, you see me fixing bugs in real time. Part of the Italian Federation. Beautiful. I don't know what is going on up here, but it looks like uh, the Norwegians are beating up on the Welsh. And then meanwhile, the Britons and the Welsh are going to war. This is this is a mess, but um, I don't think that they should be fighting each other. I think that there's, you know, something more important going on in the north, but <laughs> whatever. Oh, here we go. We've got a little bit of that dastardly diplomacy going on. The Gauls have gotten into Celtica, well, Albion. And then uh, they're at war with Lagerland right now, calling in their allies of Kashubia. So Kashubia, big strong guy over here. Gaul, big strong guy over here. Definitely some power blocks sort of establishing themselves. Macedonia has got a couple of wars going on over here. Uh, and Callius has died. And now they've got a new leader, Demetrius, uh, as well as his uh, incredible, incredible, incredible son, Alexandros here. A 656. So um, safe to say Macedonia is probably going to be doing OK as long as they can keep this organization going up just a little bit over time. Um, they'll probably be OK. So right now, I think they're doing just fine. But um, yeah, they're going to have a lot of mana coming in. So that'll be good for them. And meanwhile, Carthage, my beloved, has integrated their subjects and is looking very good right next to a very scary Egyptos uh, and a very scary Subi. So Hopefully they can at least get a little bit of land over here and uh, maybe they'll get some colonization going on. I'd love to see some colonization. So I let a little bit of time go by, about 50 years. Kashubia is still doing good over here. We have Markland has formed out of the Sutherfeld people, which is pretty cool. And then meanwhile, Gaul continues to dominate over here as well as uh, over here, apparently. <laughs> Looks like Norway not doing so good against the Gauls. Carthage is pushing westward. Uh, all the way over to the Canary Islands, which is going to be pretty good because they're going to eventually do some colonization. Looks like they've actually already started over here in the Caribbean with Subi and Gaul joining the race as well. Looks like Norway may get a little bit in there. I think they took this land from Iceland, so uh, that's a thing to keep an eye on. Meanwhile, Subi down in South America, which is pretty much the norm. They're also over here in uh, La Plata slash Peru area. They're basically everywhere. They're also in the Cape, as well as these islands over here in the Indian Ocean. So Subi definitely doing some exploring. Persia pushing up north, so that's pretty good. And Egyptos pushing south. So we've got a lot of competition amongst the major guys. Meanwhile, the religious map mode looking quite different because it uh, looks like the Hellenic world has changed quite a bit. We have Netarist over here, which is a heresy of Hellenic. And then we've got Paradosi over here, as well as kind of speckled throughout Macedonia because uh, the Hellenic pantheon has reformed, basically people um, rejecting the centralization around the Archon saying, return to monkey, let me worship at my temple in peace. And so that looks to be a thing. Uh, looks like basically the Hellenic world is mostly just Macedonia uh, with Netarist, mostly just Egyptos and everyone else in between mostly getting gobbled up with a couple of uh, conversions here and there. So we'll see how things go in the long term, but uh, it's looking very much one or the other here. Also, Roma has returned as the leader of the Italian Federation, and uh, we have no more incidents, but we do have a couple of reforms passed through all the way up to uh, support Mare Nostrum here. And uh, all they need to do is get through all the rest of these three 
they're going to be able to go down decentralized or centralized and the ai will more than likely go down centralization in this one and um i'm sure you guys can kind of assume what's going to happen if they go down centralization and uh see it through so 100 years in macedonia out in front one thousand development with egyptos right behind them very interesting to see subi at uh, the third spot though they will definitely grow as their colonial empire grows and then gaul once they embrace institution will be up in that third spot as well carthage um down in the uh, fifth spot with persia also mostly just subjects slash um institution stuff keeping them back from their third slash fourth spot kashubia in the seventh and then bulgaria horde bulgaria in the eighth so pretty cool stuff interesting to see a horde in the great powers so we'll see how things go moving forward so yeah subi is um is um is, is beaten up on gaul pretty good also norway has their capital in uh glamorgan or whatever very funny because uh norway was kicked out of norway by nordheim formed by sweden i believe so that's a thing we also have several slavia which means like upper slavia here formed by kashubia so we've got a couple of interesting formables on the map nordenvik is now independent uh but uh who knows how things are gonna go with that also i missed this last time macedonia is into italia so the federation is not feeling so good from that i'm sure of that losing 0.12 per month because of that so that is uh definitely going to be slowing down that uh, roman push towards rome so uh might want to take that land back if you can i'm sure uh i'm sure that these guys are feeling pretty dang good yeah yeah they're doing pretty good they're uh they're doing okay they're also they get bonuses in their mission tree from stacking it up so safe to say that uh they're doing they're doing all right oh and by the way china's collapsed and manchu has formed ashikaga is splitting japan with yusugi so that's cool also korea is just 1444 because why not in about another 50 or so years later macedonia looking incredibly incredibly big with uh, the paradosi faith essentially gone uh, it's mostly been swatted out by the hellenics which uh it's funny because they actually own athens here either way persia um might need a little bit of a nerf here persia is incredibly big it's a very blobby persia pushing all the way out into the steppes over into nepal of all places and uh pushing a couple of their satrapies but not anything super crazy they've obviously got some pretty big neighbors over here carthage looking pretty good over here still uh, hanging out friends with marrakesh i suppose and subi pushed all the way up in uh basically pushed gaul out of gaul gaul's capital is now uh where is it at over here i actually don't know where their capital is well that's a thing <laughs> either way nordenvik had a bit of a renaissance after actually losing quite a bit of land up in the north to one of the uh, Britonic tribes and now they're looking good with nordheim pushing over into the rus several slavia looking incredibly good probably going to form full slavia if i had to guess and uh, saxony is just gone for the actually the germanics in general are mostly gone split between lombardia illyria and several slavia up here Roma continues to uh, dominate, I guess you could say, the Federation, though most of the tags have been eliminated. There's still a bit of growth going on. Uh, I think we may see a united Rome, but uh, hard to say. Meanwhile, the colonial game, South America, very much a Subi with a little bit of Punic with a Chumsor over here for these guys. We have Nordenvik over in this uh, Yucatan Peninsula with Subi taking the rest over here on the left coast is all Subi. A little bit of uh, Carthage, a little bit of Gaul, and uh, a lot of Subi with some Nordenvik. So uh, clearly a very, very Subi game. You would expect that. But uh, the fact that Gaul got bopped so hard means they can't really colonize. The fact that Carthage got bopped by their subjects early on makes them not really able to colonize. It's still going to be at least a little bit. And uh, with all those subjects, we may see some liberty issues with Subi later on. I kind of expect it actually. And so about 220 years into the game, Subi has very much jumped out in front. But again, it's mostly because of their subjects development. Uh, Egyptos is very close to second place, if you don't consider that, with Macedon right there. So all three of these guys are very similar in strength, if I had to guess. Same with Persia. The top four in general are all very similar. With Carthage, with their colonial empire there in the fifth spot. Lombardia jumping out into the sixth spot with Illyria in the seventh spot. And several Slavia with almost a thousand development in the eighth spot will be looking to move all the way up into the top five after they embrace institutions so that's pretty cool to see so i forgot to point it out earlier but i think that uh, the religious tension subsided on their own it does happen after a while if we do not get a league war and the league war will pop off based on an imperial incident that will happen if it spikes i don't want to spoil too much but it looks like it was avoided this time around sadly it does not look 
like a federal authority is going to be going up anytime soon though the uh, provinces of the federation have been absolutely conquered by subi and uh, macedonia and uh, yeah so the federation is pretty strong i mean all things considered roma has got a lot of bonuses from the reforms but uh, they're not gonna be able to get any more which is uh, definitely a nerf to them especially considering the fact that there are some massive blobs around them the colonial world continues to fill in with uh, the usual suspects from before filling that in uh, we've also got Gaul over here in the New World, or over here in Africa, rather, with uh, the Punic Niger looking pretty good. Kilwa doing incredibly good over here. And then uh, Egyptian Australia, because we have to, right? It does look like the Persians have also joined the colonial game, colonizing some spice islands over here. So that's pretty cool. Well, I think it might be pretty safe to say who won this game. <laughs> if you just had a quick glance. Big Gujarat, but... Uh, very big Persia. Egyptos ended up losing a little bit of land to a massive Macedonia and uh, holy Subi Batman. This Subi or Swebi or however it's pronounced. I'm sure people are going to be griping about how I pronounce it. Nerd. Is crazy. It is uh, incredibly powerful. They have a lot of development and um, basically all of the new world. Also very much worth mentioning that Italia ended up conquering like most of Roma, splitting it with Macedonia, and Roma is like exiled to the islands over here, which is super funny. The Federation is in shambles, minus 45 per month, six princes, four free cities, and um, still the Grand Adam, but um, they got nothing to show for it. On the religious front, Punic ended up actually dominating, though uh, a lot of the Celtic Isles up here, not very united in terms of the faith. And then Romana actually did really good. And Romana actually uses the uh, the holy sites mechanic here. You can see that their uh, their holy sites are, this is Milan, Roma, Mazuna, which is down here in uh, Sicily. And then we have Carthage and then Athens. So they got three of them, which is uh, more than I think I have ever seen the AI do. So that's pretty cool. Zoroastrian did incredibly good with uh, Zoroastrian Wu. I don't know, man. I got nothing. And of course, Netherism over here down under with a little bit of Islam. So that's pretty cool. Of course, the entire new world is Punic. So a bit of a monopoly on that. And of course, you know, Hellenism. You can't, you expect it to do well when you've got Macedonia leading the way. And the Netherism still doing well, pushing all the way down into uh, Central Africa, dotting around here. But it's really cool. Macedonian culture pushed quite a bit over here. And uh, Subi actually did quite a bit of culture conversion over here as well over here this is a uh, like five culture groups that have been condensed into essentially three so that's pretty sweet shout out alexandrian culture pushing well down here all the way into uh this east africa and even south africa so pretty cool to see that we've got plenty of these uh of these uh, cultures over here from subi haldorian is their primary culture sonar which is the mexican culture uh grunewaldish which is their brazilian culture and then Vyrnubin? I don't know how to actually say this. This is coded by uh, Cody, the guy behind Alki. Um, so that is the Peruvian culture. So pretty cool. We finished the game with Subi very well out in front. And even without their colonial empire, they're still the number one great power. So that definitely says a lot about them. Macedonian number two, Persia number three, Egyptos number four. Um, quite a bit of a power discrepancy between Persia and Egyptos with Gujarat, an Indian Bob in the fifth spot, and Natalia with 1,700, almost 1,800 development in the sixth spot. Carthage, still in the seventh spot. We'll have to take a look into that. And then uh, Kilwa in the eighth spot with economic hegemon going to Subi. Somehow Carthage managed this to be great power, just West African dev, but there's quite a bit of development over here. Not nearly as much as up in Europe, especially in Italia. That's, um, that's pretty crazy. These are like 50 dev provinces, 50 plus dev. So that's nutty. Anybody who watches this channel just has come to expect it, but look at that. Cole, 63 dev, 29 base production. That is, that is insane. That is actually crazy. So friends, post Phenom, my mod my, that, that I've been working on for a few months, about seven months now, and uh, it is here. It is ready for you to play right now. You can check it out linked in the description. Join the Discord if you're interested in some of that information. I would love to have you there. And if you got questions for lore or anything like that, we have chats specifically for it. If uh, you uh, want to leave a like on this video, I would very much appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe and ding the bell so you get notified when these videos go up live every week. Special thanks to Kaiser Dar of Akadia, Sheol, Gamus23, Ian Powell, Cannon Fodder, Josh Kipchinski, Agent Rhino, Blonde Damon, Isaiah, Rover, Bubba J, Saronska, Ricardo, Cobalt, Rex Rex, Nathan Albright, and many more.